Netflix counts to 1080p. Electron is trending. There's a new KDE Slim book. In town, you might say, and Razor. Uh, yeah, it's being a big old meanie, but it's another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax. No, oh, hang on. I got this new shot here. I can kind of reach over to Pedro and smack him um, and talk about some of the great <laughs> things that we found personally going on in the world of Linux. Before we get started, we do like to put a little bit of ketchup, man, and maybe, maybe a little bit of mustard, but no great coupon. How's, how's uh, Britannia treating you this week, man? Uh, it's very cold. I actually have cold sores down the side of my face because, yeah, it turns out walking out of the house in uh, 50 kilometers an hour wind when it's minus two outside, it's not good for your skin. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not much to report over here. I had a uh, fun time. If you have an MSI B350 Tomahawk and you do the update to your BIOS, which is out, and it's like seven days ago. Be careful if you're running dual GPUs because it uh, uh, enumerates them differently and it'll cause you all types of pain. But you can run your 3000 gigajoule memory at 3200. That's, That's the thing good. that made me uh, kind of all the happy. But one thing I was talking to Pedro about before we went live is before that, with the XMP profile, I was able to run it at 2933. The speed difference between 2933 and 3200, nothing. <laughs> Nada. And that was through our gauntlet of gaming benchmarks that we run in video encoding benchmarks. And listen, I understand it's a feel good number. 3,200 makes it, I'm going to sleep better this evening knowing I'm at 3,200, but just, just kind of tap the brakes on this, but you must run it for the ultimate news. It doesn't really matter, but what does matter? VLC 3.0 is here for our faces, baby. Indeed. And, well, there's not a whole lot going on, even though it's a big version number. Uh, they do have a sizable list of features. They uh, have experimental will and support. Experimental still. Uh, they introduced support for the Samsung DeX dockable devices, which we've talked about on the show. Uh, it's that Samsung dock that you just uh, plug your phone in and it turns into a desktop. So that's good to see. We kind of need that uh, backing software if we are to ever consider that uh, old motto. The perfect, the ideal scenario in my case. You just come home, you take your phone, you plug it into a dock, and there you go. There's your PC. The dock is plugged into an external GPU that runs two or three monitors. Boom. Bob's your uncle. That is... The end case scenario for me, that's like the perfect world. But uh, this is VLC, if, so if you want to play your videos and you have a Samsung phone and the Dex dock, there you go. One of the big uh, things that a... I saw, man, was it now has support for 4K, well, UHD 3040 mm -hmm. by 2160, or actual 4K video decoding at something faster than the speed of smell. <laughs> and I say that as somebody yeah. with a 1700 16 thread Ryzen running at 3.7 gigahertz and i've been looking to try that maybe i i don't know i don't have a lot i, I have 4k content ish through netflix but we'll talk about that mm -hmm. in a second um that's really the big thing that i saw i don't typically use um vlc or media players on pcs anymore i'm just kind of like plex all the things nowadays yeah, I still use uh, VLC mostly for watching videos what I get from the local video store because you'd never really know what kind of codecs uh, they used. Uh, and VLC just plays anything you throw at it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's see on this video bandwidth uh, wagon thing because Netflix 1080p is not something that we've been able to experience in Linux because it's been 720p, but there's now a Chrome extension that will force it into 1080p, and I will tell you that it works. How does it work? Well, the mm -hmm. core of Netflix playback lies in JavaScript, Cadmium Player Core JS, and it's poorly, poorly enforced, it turns out. So with this, it's really easy to get that business up and running. I wanted to give it a mention because that's always annoyed me. Not again, mm -hmm. I don't watch... It's rare. I might check something out in a browser to see if I'm going to go watch it later, right? Yeah, but I'm not going to sit and watch, even though you know, I got a 28 inch UHD display. Nope. Mm -mm. Uh, 
but it, it's just been bugging me that I couldn't do it. And now I can. That, that makes me happy. I, I thought we would just tell the lovely people about that. Because, I mean, yeah. it's open source. It's on GitHub. You, you can inspect it and use it. Because, you know, listen, man, I see what you said in the notes, keeping it locked down yeah. and all that. I don't think Netflix formally Quickster. Um, I'm not going to let you guys forget that. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think they want you to be able to watch it how you want to watch it, anywhere you want to watch it, period. It's the studios. They're like, you need to stop. Yeah, piracy. because Netflix is, I, I, I get that. Netflix is in it for the money. And if they can give the best possible experience to people on Linux, regardless of whatever this or they're using, all the better for them because it means more money they get from people. That's great, uh, but there are those studios who, for some reason, are really, really petty. Well, you to got to think about something like uh, you know, 4K. You, you what is the 4K on the desktop requires like Microsoft Edge browser with the HDCP whatever encryption through the video. Yeah, it the, is uh, ridiculous. DRM chipset thing or drm bit in the chipset or what yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not something that's going to happen yeah good plugin give it a try if that is your thing open source projects trends for 2018 <laughs> a couple of couple of smart things in here man yeah there are a couple of smart things and then there's the really big one which is you guessed it electron framework apps oh no wait no sorry they call it cross-platform development oh, yes no, that's we've a, come down to that student <laughs> athletes okay <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the the big one is cross-platform development and they give you an example like angular um facebook react and electron of mm. course Electron apps, because it's uh, it's the flash of 2018. Oh, yeah. Electron apps. <laughs> no, man, listen, you know, I, I'm down with it. You know, one can only hope with the because, of course, there's a ton of machine learning AI and all that, because that, that was the hotness in 2017. Yeah. It's probably going to be the hotness in 2018 when you think about it. But, um, you know, maybe, just maybe the rise in this machine learning, you know, with, with like any luck when the singularity happens, it's going to realize that electron, uh, you know, just electrons rubbish and nope it from orbit. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to go find Sarah Connor and we'll be done with it. So yeah, <laughs> that's definitely a thing. But on the topic of electron, something that we did want to bring up is discord. Not only are we using discord for mm -hmm. Pedro's audio and video right now, uh, they're adding a long, long requested feature spiel chuck. And it is slowly Ooh, rolling out. The squiggly out. line is back. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, blessed. Blessed. Blessed squiggly red line. And currently it's only on Mac, but they do say it will be rolling out to Windows and Linux when they're happy with the state of it. Now, they're testing on Mac. Well. They're yeah. testing on Mac. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, that's probably what it's being developed on. Come on, let's be probably, real. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Discord's a decent piece of kit. It's a... Uh, kind of like uh telegram or you know business messaging for people with the nine-year-old mentality myself included in that so i'm not knocking you uh i'm digging it man uh just enable it on linux because i can't spiel anymore that has been, <laughs> that has been beaten out of me and google is taking like i i'm already down on the ground and google's winding up again to destroy my english grammar with doing the grammar correction and Google Docs when I'm typing. It's like, I don't even have to worry about grammar anymore. It's going to sort that for yeah. me, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm definitely uh, terrified when I don't have school. Uh, there's been multiple times where I've just cracked open Thunderbird Composer to, like, paste something. I was like, did I spell that right? And it's like, yeah, you still know how to do it, but once your brain loses that skill. Um, it's a muscle like any other. And, yeah, uh, people of our generation have uh, come to rely on Mr. Rhett's quiggly line, as you put it, uh, because it's just really, really useful. Sometimes it's an, an L too little. Sometimes it's a U where it wasn't supposed to be, especially uh, when it comes down to, like, English US and English UK differentiation. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see it. Get it out sooner than later. So. Mm-hmm snaps we talk about them it seems like every week but hey that's what we're here for if we find it interesting and this could be um kind of affecting some people man default mm -hmm. snaps in ubuntu 
1804 LTS. They're looking into making that a thing. And, yeah. you know, hey, man, look, I, I'm cool with it. As long as I'm free not to use them for a while because I think they have a lot of maturing to do. Uh, mm-hmm. Snap definitely needs a lot more time in the oven. However, over Pedro, I want to say this. You know, I do think this will be good for Snap as a whole, just mm-hmm. development at package maintainers, because it's going to force the maintainers to love it. And that works so well with Google+. Plus. Oh, yeah, that works great. Uh, <laughs> now, I do love Google+, and uh, I kind of like the idea of universal packages. Uh, of course, the moment Giggity. you introduce... Yeah, uh, the moment you introduce uh, something like snaps or flat packs that need sort of a runtime, a framework that they then run off of, that kind of sort of defeats the purpose, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, I've voiced my concerns about uh, these universal packages and the inherent uh, lack of universality that they come with. I think Snap's got the best chance because everyone does, you know, the asterisk Ubuntu. And once this flips over, we're going to see it start flowing downstream with the mints and everything else. There's just one thing they really need to fix with Snaps, which is that stupid, stupid little lowercase Snap folder that it puts in the in your home directory. Hide that. Put it in dot local share. uh, Make it dot Snap. Just hide it. Put it away somewhere. Nah. Okay? <laughs> that, that, then the virtual loopback devices. Oh, let's get rid of those. <laughs> um, this, this is staggeringly, frighteningly, like, re- what? I, uh, oh, th- it's the Amazon thing all over again. Th- this, this, this just came across <laughs> while we were getting ready and set up for the show, but we wanted to cover it. This is also Humbuntu related. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Humbuntu. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, more diagnostics <laughs> data from the desktop this is on their mailing list and i genuinely can't believe what i'm reading here pedro it's like do (laughs) do you like internet pitchforks is that is that the end game here because this is what i would do if i wanted me some of that they want to add a Mm -hmm. checkbox to the installer that is completely harmless i mean to me i think it's going to collect some data during the install the flavor, um, giggity, uh, RAM, CPU, screens, GPU, OEM manufacturer, disk layout, stuff like that. That's not mm-hmm. bad at all. Oh, I have a problem with that. I, I, I'm cool with that, 100%. If I saw that box, I would probably check it because I like helping stuff out. I have that on for Chrome. I have that on for Foxfire. And yeah. the only reason, oh, wh- why are we bringing this up, Pedro? <laughs> Well, we're bringing this up because this isn't exactly the first time that Ubuntu has sort of, kind of, you know, uh, purposefully uploaded people's uh, usage ab- habits to uh, their servers and whether or not they disclose your um, your personal information. That is very much up, to, up for debate, although they made sure to be very clear when the whole Amazon Lens thing in Unity uh, came out and it was on by default the whole freaking time that your uh, searching habits were being sent to first to Canonical, then to Amazon, then fed back to you as an ad. But, uh, so, Pedro, they've learned from that. Oh, yeah, clearly. Uh, well, they did. They did learn a little bit from it, and now they actually give you the little tick box now that is on by default. Uh, you can untick it if you want, mm-hmm. but at least the option is there. And if you pay attention while you're installing your system, it's there. And to be honest, if it is just during the install and the options you picked and what system you're installing it on and uh, just that stuff, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. I think it's completely benign. There's not a big issue with it. Yes. Uh, 2017, 2018, everything should be all, all, all of the shite storms that have happened is because something has been opt in. Not, Mm -hmm. well, you know, that's fine. But as soon as I have the default is I have to go disable it, then the internet goes crazy. So, Mm -hmm. uh, this is still a thing. We we can uh, melt people's faces with USB keys, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Uh, there, there are those fake USB flash drives that'll fry your laptop, but there's also a bit of an exploit. Well, there was a bit of an exploit with KDE that, uh, yeah. Uh, that you can, well, you used to be able to 
plug in a flash drive, and if the name field contained a dollar sign, open parentheses, close parentheses, it would interpret it as a bash command. Hang on, hang on. I got to depth the brakes with what Mike said. Wow, that sounds pretty horrible. <laughs> this is why I still mount things the old way. <laughs> yeah, sure. Of course you do. Uh, so the thing is, with KDE, when you plug in a flash drive, it gives you a little slidey out pop up from the uh, the mountable devices app in the tray, and it gives you an option. Do you want to mount it? Do you want to open the folder with whatever um, file explorer is your default? If you've got pictures in it, can you open it in like Shotwell or anything, any other app that you have set as the default uh, photo app? And all that. That sounds great. Except, like I was saying, uh, if your drive is uh, called dollar sign open parentheses a bash command close parentheses, all it did instead of mounting it was run the um, the bash command that was inside the parentheses. That that's really bad. That's like Windows two thousand level bad. Hmm. So. It, you really done goofed on that one, KDE. It's KDE thing. I don't have to worry about it if, I, if I'm if i not running KDE. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I am because I'm stubborn mm-hmm. and stupid. <laughs> all right. All right. That, that's the <laughs> PSA. That's what that was there for. Uh, yesterday, I learned there's a tool called App File that helps you solve CMake dependencies because your life has went horribly wrong and you're having to compile something with CMake. Um, yeah. I, I threw this in because I didn't know about it. This is supposed to be about things we find interesting. And it's like, wow, that's mm-hmm. interesting. You know, you can put it in with them, um, you know, just sudo apt install apt file. And it's going to track down the depth. Didn't get a chance to play with it, but you think I'm uh, just stupid monkey sauce and there's a better tool. It's not just me. Uh, the very top high rated comment there is uh, Doom 007. And he mentions auto apt, which is what you should be using. It just gets rid of most of the dependency tracking. Ladies and gentlemen, I I want to remind everyone, anyone who says things like what you should be using is dealing in absolute, that means they're a Sith. Don't trust them. (laughs) I never claimed to be a good guy. Uh, Well, uh, auto apt is sort of like uh, apt file. In apt file, you just run it, you point it at the uh, CMake file, and it will give you the dependencies and what you need to install. Um, From there, you just install the dependencies, run CMake again, and it should build just fine. With auto apt, you just run auto apt CMake and whatever you want to suffix to the CMake command, be it a dot, two dots for the uh, previous uh, directory in the tree, or whichever file you want to point it at, and it will do the auto resolve. And it's not just CMake, it does that with make, and it does that with configure. So, yeah, it saves you a hell of a lot of time hunting down dependencies. Nope. Mm-hmm. No, I spent too many years learning how to read CMake's butchered <laughs> output of what it actually needs. And everything you just <laughs> described sounds like it's going to suck all the fun out of it. I, I'm not going to have my day-long project getting X compiled. And, um, no, that's cool to know. <laughs> Definitely a thing to play with. So, uh, we got an email like two or three days ago. And I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. man, we have released a new KDE Slim book and... Uh, could you, could you change the name on your last slim book review to like old or something like that? So we changed it to 2017, version, yeah. right? So there wouldn't be confusion. Plus we didn't have enough room to write what we really thought about it. Uh, <laughs> but they're back, man. Uh, for round two, KDE yes, slim are. book numero dos. Yep. Uh, it is number two. It is a teeny tiny little bit smaller. Uh, it weighs about the same. It still has a 13.3 inch uh, display. 1080p, like the old one, uh, seems to have a bit more USB ports this time around. Uh, doesn't even have the adapter for the um, Ethernet port anymore because it's just got a Type C now, so you can just run it off that. Uh, it's got a the base version comes with an Intel i5 uh, 2.5 gigahertz with a turbo of 3.1, and the high end version comes with a 2.7 i7 with 3.5 gigahertz uh, turbo. It is. Uh, it doesn't have Iris graphics, which is probably still my um, biggest complaint with the specs, the inside specs anyway. But my biggest complaint uh, with the uh, complaint uh, with the um, previous Slim Book was a keyboard. Mm-hmm. That keyboard was atrocious. The keys were huge. There was enough space for you to write your master's dissertation in between the uh, the, the actual keycaps. 
uh, the power button was where the delete button should be, and looking at the pictures for this one, they didn't really change that at all. Well, I mean, okay, okay. Yeah. My first thought was, <laughs> anybody releasing a laptop right now going, oh, jeez, because everyone else, the consumer ends, is like, y'all get any more of them Ryzen's? Uh, <laughs> yeah. At least in the circles yeah. of the people that I've definitely talked to. Uh, here's the thing, uh, about 1,000 wet, stinky American dollars for a usable system config, and I consider 8 gigajoules mm -hmm. of RAM because it ships with 4. That's criminal. That should not be a shipping <laughs> option. Uh, but yeah, man, I mean, this is basically a CPU refresh, DDR4 memory. That's good. Better Wi-Fi, two Wi-Fi options. Good on that. And, oh boy, oh boy, a clicky touchpad that, okay, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, they did change one more thing, which I did not like with the original version, which was around the screen, you didn't just have like the plastic but painted metallic bezel. They also had a really thin um plastic tab around the uh, the screen to raise it up from the keyboard so you wouldn't get the uh the grease from your fingers off the keyboard and onto the screen that in the review unit that they sent me that uh particular plastic tab was crusty as all hell uh well, they got rid of that so that's good <laughs> Nothing I can say that'll be on this show that would make it past me on the edit. So we're just going to leave that there. Um, cutting edge, man. This is not news, according to Pedro. No, this isn't news. And uh, you may have seen this. It was all over Google+. Plus. It was all over Twitter. Razer doesn't care about Linux from the GNOME blogs. So a uh, person who wrote this, Hugh C., uh, he uh, apparently realized that Razer, being the uh, gaming um, uh, seller of gaming peripherals and gaming laptops and gaming eh, desktops, I guess, um, they don't really support Linux. And he was trying to get LVFS support and all the benefits that comes with it integrated into GNOME. And he contacted Razer, and Razer basically gave the uh, gave him the PR friendly answer of uh we have discussed your offer with a dedicated team and we are thankful for your enthusiasm and for your good idea i'm afraid i also have to let you know that at this moment in time our support to software is only focused on windows and mac in other shocking news sky reportedly still blue uh <laughs> why do you hate people who are colorblind <laughs> okay water still wet <laughs> Give me, give me 30 seconds and I'll have something for that, all right? <laughs> well, uh, I honestly don't see how this is news and anyone who would be surprised by Razer saying, yeah, we don't actually support Linux, shouldn't really be writing blog posts, especially ones in the GNOME official blog. Now, I hate GNOME. I've gotten to the point where I don't really care what GNOME does or says or whatever. But really? Do you really... This decide to throw your toys out of the pram and uh, bang your widow baby feet on the floor saying, Razor was mean to me. Really? Man. Really? You're, you're just being mean, man. Uh, <laughs> here's what I think. I, I think uh, dude just like learned a life lesson like right then and there, man. <laughs> that is very important. That is a part of everyone's uh, emotional development. Is Don't believe Anything said by a soulless corporation, even if it's your favorite team that you've artificially subscribed to, you know, that's why I don't do this. My, it's like my soulless corporation's better than yours. No, tribalism sucks and it's been screwing up humanity for a long time. You judge them yeah. by what they do, by their actions. A lot of people give me static because I'm like, hey man, I like NVIDIA. And they're like, no, AMD, they love open source and they do that. And yet they, they say a lot of that. But mm -hmm. the, while they're saying that NVIDIA is like, oh, you know, that car release yesterday, where's your Linux drivers? I'm like, oh, thanks. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, take me a cup of that. Okay. That's the thing. Uh, listen, I personally believe if your gerbil looks like a spaceship and or requires drivers for additional functionality, you've made poor life choices. That's just me. Send me some hate mail and tell me why I'm wrong. Like I am about most things. Pale Moon. We all learned what Pale Moon was today. Well, not today, this week in our Discord yeah. chat. Uh, and, uh, 
very, very serious fan of that particular product. It's a web browser, I think, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And yes. this is one way to sort the issue, Pedro. What? what eh, all right. They, they had a config that conflicted with something. Now, this is for the BSD ports. Yes. But yes. This, this could easily roll over into anything open sauce. Uh, it was open BSD work in progress, right? Mm -hmm. the, the tree yep. they used to maintain, get everything migrate ports into the official BSD ports tree. Uh, dude came in and he's like, yo, man, you got to comply with the directive and the directive says you need to change this and this and just walk right in, kick the door down. And so there's like, you know what? Poof. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> yeah, just it's like, you know what? We're not even going to deal with the Pale Moon project anymore. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is 100% a, ain't got time for this move. And I unfortunately think that kind of speaks a, a volume or two about Pale Moon because I, I feel... Well over 95% of people's first reaction to the story was to Google what Pale Moon was. Yeah, what the hell's a Pale Moon? Uh, but no, it is... In this specific case, the way he walked in and it just started lashing out, no! The way you do the default configs goes against our redistribution policy. Uh, so you will change it or you will not be allowed to use it. And yeah, the thread ends up locked uh, with one of the BSD developers going, yeah, that's a, that's a great way to alienate people from your project. Kudos. Mm -hmm. And I kind of have to agree. If you go in, guns blazing, swinging left and right, yeah, y people are not going to touch your uh, little bit of software in their operating system because they don't want to deal with that. And this is also going to leave also a Also on top of that, man, we, we need to point out the guy that was trying to blow him up not responsible for blowing people up in that project at all. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> so why, why don't I get in touch with the person who makes these decisions from Pale Moon, not mm -hmm. you? Oh, and it's, just, it's fun to read, make some popcorn. You're not going to learn anything. It is open source, egos, drama online. Yeah. Nothing Plenty more. Of that. <laughs> nothing less. Uh, real quick, before we get into Slice of Pie, we like to thank the people making this show possible. That is our Patreons, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That is where we get to read your name out. Yeah, we, we do. We publicly oh, shame yes. you. We're like, ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you make this possible. We don't do commercials and uh, you keep us honest. You know, what we say might be wrong. You might disagree with it, but you know, we're not being influenced in any way, shape, form or fashion. And we got a gang of people. This one, oh, yeah. Pedro. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Reinecker, Mr. or Mrs. Reinecker. I honestly don't know. That could go either way. Uh, we have Sharon also uh, kicked in. Zoe, Jack, Eric, Todd, all new Patreons. Thank you all very, very much. And a couple of recurring Patreons, which uh, we already mentioned Lutris last week. Strider, good on you. Thank you very much. And, and uh, Arthurin also Arthur. upped. Thank you. No, man, that's... Yeah, uh, that's wicked cool. Uh, I like giving everybody a shout out. Everybody's in the credits too. Stick around for the credits. Oh yes, that's awesome. <laughs> if you join us on Patreon, you get some cool stuff back. We think it's cool stuff. You get a couple extra shows a month. You get four extra shows a month that we do. Audio only. Check that out. You get access to the Discord, where uh, we hang out the other six days a week. It's a, and people are asking where Blonde Me is. Yep. No, Blonde Me is dead. It's <laughs> terrifying. It's petrifying. Uh, if that's not your thing, man, we got a wish zone with some things on there that we had to buy last week because everything blew up, so spending's on a little bit of a freeze, but if you want to end up on Frank's wall of fine upstanding cannibals, this is one I'm looking forward to. I th This is a like a truly a wish thing. I want to get another ring doorbell and put it down here. So when <laughs> next time somebody rings the door and we're in the middle of doing the show, guess what? They're on it. Ding dong. Right. And I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> and I, I have no issue doing that, Pedro. And I'm telling you why I have no issue doing that. Because because if I get grumpy and I'm on tech support with somebody, halfway through, I'm like, hang on, we got to go into commercial. And I will bring up a bumper. It's like, all right, we're out. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. I'll have them convinced they're on a show. Um, <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Linux game cast. 115 beautiful people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are tapping that merch run very close to that. But forget about that. Forget about this next one, which will be an audio only stream for both shows and Ooh. a video RSS. No, 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 no. What we're looking at is raising the bar. Jack minus. Mm -mm, just Jill. Oh, yeah. Linux Chicks LA. She's going to be joining us each and every week, not with just this show, but with everything we do. 
So if you've been sitting back thinking, man, I, I want to throw four quarters a week at Pedro, do it and we'll, we'll put it to good use. And um, we'll actually have somebody on this show that knows what they're talking about. I mean, come on. That'd be nice for a change. That'd be great, man. <laughs> it would uh, be terrifying. Now, shameless promotion over time for a slice. Man, that looks like something I drew. Um, uh, yeah. What is that pie made of? Um, Human meat? Quiet, you said too much. Tonsils. <laughs> Ultimate smart door lock. About the project, gain access by presenting RFID key fob, entering your pin, touch screen, firstborn, uh, solve an ancient mind. I'm just making that bit up. Uh, <laughs> One time code sent by. This is a nice little project if you don't realize that uh, I'm just going to kick the door in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Basically use this on like a vault or something that you don't need to open very often because... Oh, it's PHP yeah. my admin. Nope, bad, wrong, get it away. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Listen, I... Okay, now do you, you think the something's went horribly wrong in your life if you need firmware drivers and stuff for your wireless gerbil, or your gerbil, your gaming gerbil? No, 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 no. If entrance to your house has a back end running PHP, far worse. I... <laughs> Oh, yeah. It runs see, see, uh, its this entire is, this SQL is immediate, database. Yep, that, 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 that was live footage of immediately. Yep. What follows? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a neat project. All the parts list, all this is in our show notes, like everything else. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I just wanted to mention that to everyone. Maybe it's a... Uh, listen, it... <laughs> You're probably like me. You'll never retire. You know, even when we're in the home, we'll probably be doing some form of something like mm -hmm. this. And, but if I ever retired and add like that straight up free time, I'd be doing stuff like this all day. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I would burn through all my money just <laughs> making needless things like that. Um, this next one, this next one is this a bit more useful bit more useful it is uh so uh you may not know them uh uh particle they make uh wi-fi uh and cellular they call them iot devices but basically you can do them for whatever you want uh you can use them for whatever you want that slip of the tongue there uh they are very very underpowered when compared to even the raspberry pi zero even though they share the same form factor uh the um the regular boards just come with one megabyte of flash and 256k of RAM. They do support Bluetooth 5, so think of these less as a whole computer like the Raspberry Pi. Pardon me. And more uh, like the modules that you would use to upgrade a prototype build that you're working on. Isn't the so big thing Bluetooth. with these is you, you can effectively build a mesh network on your own yeah. and roll it wicked cheap yeah <laughs> i i was just wondering man uh <laughs> it is they are cheap uh they start at uh 15 if you want to get the really uh no sorry they start at nine bucks uh if you want to get the really high-end ones I say really high end. They're still stupidly low powered. Uh, the boron will come at 29 bucks uh, and shipping is due in July. So if you're looking to augment your current prototype board and just have a mesh network that's not too costly, there you go. And I want to see what the actual throughput is on these because I, I will I will wallpaper this house and finally defeat <laughs> Jordan who consistently violates the temporal accord and sneaks back during the construction of my house and installs mesh and Faraday cages where it's horrifying. <laughs> Wi-Fi, it, it, it's a dead zone. You could probably do legitimate science experiments in here as to figuring out what's wrong with 2.4 or 5 in this house. It is bizarre. So that's good to see. Yeah. Um, that's going to do us, ladies and gentlemen. Had a good time. But uh, before we get out of here, we do like to give you an option because we live off your feedback it's our favorite part mm -hmm. to talk back to us Pedro. they can head over what and linux gamecast we got a contact button over there don't we oh yeah linuxgamecast.com there's the contact button and there's a form you fill make sure to pick lwdw and boom your thing gets featured right here right now well right around this time in whatever show you happen to contact today
<laughs> so, wait until I get you guys on a poll, then then, 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 <laughs> then I'm going to start decorating. <laughs> Hot glue oh, gun you're and going to give us bodies. <laughs> I've already priced out mannequins. I'm not going to lie to Somehow, you. Somehow, not surprised. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I've already done that. Okay, last week, we, 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 we want to put a conclusion on this so we don't have to roll it back on oh, the yes. Saturday show. But uh, stick with us. This is about Sailfish OS because we were contacted by Ivo. And he's like, hey, man, your podcast feed doesn't work on Sailfish OS using the Podcaster app. And Podcatcher. Yeah. Podcatcher. <laughs> so... We chatted back and forth. Initially, this 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 was like me waving, and it's like, I, 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 come here, everyone, everyone, gather around. We, we in Discord is like, check this out. Somebody is still running <laughs> Selfish OS. This is awesome. <laughs> Not making fun at all. I was like, that's kind of metal in its own way, and using it legitimately. And so mm. we went back and forth, and. Our RSS feeds are fine because this is another reason we somebody had had an issue with Sonos, and I checked on my Sonos and everything worked, but it not a problem with our feeds. But I tried to help them. It's like, all right, do you get any errors or anything like that? It's like it couldn't download. Turned out that that application, what was it called, Podcatcher? Podcatcher, yeah. Podcatcher was not including a valid user agent. Mm-hmm. So it was misresolving the URL and, well, no podcast for you. <laughs> well, that that's a thing that I have our web zone set up to do mm-hmm. so we don't get hit by a ton of bots. And uh, it does the same thing with post. I mean, you can't do a post on our web zone without a user agent. But instead of blowing us up about it, he headed over to the GitHub page, created a ticket, Look at it. It's so good. Got it fixed and fixed it. <laughs> it's sorted. So if you want to listen to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays on Selfish OS, <laughs> we got it down. We, we have it yeah. covered. Um, Bob is, in fact, all of your uncles because we hope you have more than one Bob. That's the thing. All right. It's been fun. It's been real. We got to bounce out of here because uh, Pedro has dead fish to eat, but he's not going to cook it. So I think we need to roll some janky credits because I was testing out those drivers again. And man, (laughs) NVIDIA 390, curl 415, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. Look, look at the black tearing. Look at it. (laughs) It, uh, it, It's pretty, pretty effing brutal. Yeah, no, they really didn't fix that. And even the uh, the CUDA drivers that they have on their CUDA repo. It skips across monitors, man. No, on the 1080. It, it bypassed the seven. It, it went from the 770 into the 980. Causing yeah. <laughs> on, on the show note monitor, it was causing glitches. Oh, wow. Okay, this is bad. It's it's hitting the GLX compositor. So basically, every screen that's composited is going to see that. Mm, mm, mm. Terrifying. <laughs>